Hey, hey, thanks for joining us again. Today we're going to talk about mass and acceleration and friction and force and motions. We'll talk about Newton's laws of motion. So thank you so much. Remember to pause, rewind, watch as many times as needed, and always remember science rocks. Remember, it is super important for you to create a science notebook, whether it's online in Google Drive or straight up old school spiral notebook. Remember to take notes. So take notes and draw pictures as you follow along. Go ahead and copy down these 16 total vocab words. They go in A, B, C order like this. And just come back later and create your own definitions of these words. Use your own words, y'all, and draw pictures. So go ahead and pause this if you need to finish writing down the vocab words. Okay, force and mass. A force is a push or pull that acts on an object and may change its motion. Forces are needed to start, stop, or change the direction of an object's motion. The more force that is applied to an object, the greater the change in that object's motion. If the same amount of force is used to move two objects with different masses, the object with less mass will move faster, okay? So if this woman in the picture pushed two different lawnmowers using the same amount of force, the lawnmower with less mass would move faster. Friction is a force that opposes motion. So if an object is already moving, friction can slow it down or even make it stop. So when a box is slid across the ground, it will only travel a certain distance before it stops. Friction is a force that brings it to a stop. Objects on a rough surface require more force to move, and objects on a smooth surface require less force. All right, gravity, it's the force of attraction that exists between any two objects that have mass. So gravity depends on the mass of the objects and the distance between them. So gravity keeps the planets orbiting around the sun, right? And it pulls objects on Earth toward the Earth's center. So for example, gravity causes fruit on a tree to fall to the ground. All right, net force is the total unbalanced force acting on an object. So a net force has a certain strength or magnitude and a certain direction, okay? So you have these balanced forces that have equal magnitudes or sizes, right? But opposite directions. Balanced forces have equal magnitudes, equal sizes, but opposite directions, all right, the object does not accelerate because the net force is zero, okay? So this apple on the desk is pulled downward by the force of gravity. This force equals the weight of the apple. The table simultaneously exerts a normal force that is equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction, pushing up on the apple. All right, so since these forces are balanced, the apple does not accelerate um, in either direction. And since the apple was not in motion to begin with, it just remains at rest and chills on the table. All right, then you have these things called unbalanced forces that have unequal magnitudes or sizes, unequal magnitudes or sizes, and or directions, okay? So unbalanced forces result in net forces that are not zero. So the change in movement will take place in the direction of the net force. A frame of reference is an object or point from which movement is determined, okay? The frame of reference could be maybe a starting point, or a place on a map, right? Or maybe the origin of a graph, okay? Or maybe the equator is your frame of reference. Or a general location could be your frame of reference. All right, on to Newton's laws of motion. So the first law of motion talks about inertia, all right? An object in motion stays in motion and an object at rest remains at rest unless 
acted on by an unbalanced outside force. Okay, so that's Newton's first law of motion. Inertia is a property of matter that describes the tendency of an object to resist changes in its state of motion. Okay, so if a ball is rolled across the floor, it should continue rolling across the floor in a straight line forever unless acted upon by some other unbalanced force. So we know that balls do not continue rolling forever, right? Because they are acted upon by the unbalanced force of friction. We talked about friction, okay? So if a box is at rest on the floor, it will remain motionless on the floor forever unless acted upon by some unbalanced force, right? So, if someone came along and pushed the box, the box would move because the person provided an unbalanced force, okay? Inertia is dependent on the mass of an object. So, the more mass of the object, the greater its inertia and the more force is required to change its motion, all right, Newton's second law of motion states that an unbalanced force will cause an object to accelerate according to the following equation. We've got force equals mass times acceleration. Force equals mass times acceleration. So acceleration is a change in an object's speed or direction of motion over time. So if an object is accelerating in a certain direction, that is an indication that a force is acting on the object in that same direction as its acceleration. Okay, so an increase in the force acting on an object is associated with an increase in the acceleration of that object. So on this graph, it takes the form of a straight line, right? Right? Okay, so look at this picture example. All right, we've got Jillian, here's her force. We've got Anne, here's her force. And we've got Aaron, holy smokes, here's her force. Okay, so Jillian, Anne, and Aaron are pushing their broken down car along the road. What the heck? Not fun. So Jillian and Anne are pushing with an equal amount of force to the left. Notice their arrows, the same. Jillian and Anne are po pushing with an equal amount of force to the left. Aaron, on the other hand, is pushing with a force twice as large as each of the other two. Holy smokes. So, no other horizontal, horizontal forces are acting on the car. So, the net force acting on the car is to the left, right? We want the car to go this way. So, um its acceleration is going to be to the left, okay? So if only Jillian and Ann were pushing the car, how would the car's rate of acceleration along the road be different, all right? So when all three of these ladies are pushing the car, Aaron is supplying half of the force, okay? So these two together make up half, and then Aaron is supplying the other half of the force. So if only Jillian and Anne were pushing the car, the total force acting on it would be cut in half, right? So as a result, the car would accelerate to the left still, but at half of its original rate. All right, Newton's third law of motion states that for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So whenever one object exerts a force on another object, the second object exerts an equal force on the first object, but in the opposite direction, okay? So consider this girl leaning up against this wall. The girl exerts a force on the wall by leaning against it, right? And the wall exerts a force on the girl that keeps her from falling over backwards, so, these forces are equal in size, but opposite in direction, all right? It's reasonable to wonder how anything ever moves then, right? How does anything ever move then? Uh, so, here's an example. Um, if a horse is pulling forward on a buggy, and the buggy is pulling back on the horse with the same force, right? Um, the forces are balanced, Okay, and if the forces are balanced, then how can anything move? 
All right. So the short answer is that not all of the forces have been accounted for. Not all of the forces have been accounted for. If only two forces involved were the horse pulling on the buggy um, and the buggy pulling back on the horse, neither would move. Okay, so in this case, as in many others, it is very um, important to identify all of the forces and note which forces are acting on which objects in order to identify um, the net force. Okay, so in this example, the force of the buggy isn't the only force acting on the horse. Okay, as the horse walks, the horse is walking, as the horse walks, it pushes backward against the ground okay and the ground pushes forward on the horse so these forces are also balanced but they are acting on different objects okay the horse's push acts on the ground and the ground's push acts on the horse so one's acting on the ground and one's acting on the horse. So as a result, um, the result is that the two are accelerated away from each other. Okay, the two are accelerated away from each other. However, since the earth is the earth is so incredibly massive, okay, compared to the horse and buggy. So the effect of the horse's push against it has almost no effect, okay? While the horse and the buggy visibly move forward. All right, y'all, make sure to watch these three videos sometime um, covering motion, Newton's laws, and friction. Okay, practice question time. Number one, Trevor is pushing two boxes across a sidewalk. We've got box A, Here's box A, and it has a mass of four kilograms, okay? And box B, box B, has a mass of eight kilograms, okay? And according to Newton's second law of motion, if Trevor applies the same amount of force to each box, the same amount of force to each box, um, what is going to happen? So, um, let's see, A, box B will accelerate at twice the rate of box A. Box A will accelerate at twice the rate of box B. Box B will move twice the distance as box A, or box A and B will accelerate at the same rate. Okay, so let's think about this. Newton's second law of motion states that acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass, right? But the greater the mass, okay, this is eight kilograms compared to four, the greater the mass of an object being accelerated, the greater amount of force needed to accelerate that object, okay? So the mass of an object is directly related to the rate at which it will accelerate when this same force is applied to it. So since box A is only half, okay, it's only four kilograms, this one's eight, that's half. Since box A is only half the mass of box B, then box A will accelerate twice the rate, okay? It's going to accelerate twice the rate of box B if the same force is applied. Okay, so that puts us at B. All right, number two, Penny has two dogs. Fluffy here on the left, little Fluffy, and Butch right here on the right. All right, so Penny thinks her dogs might enjoy a little adventure. She owns two identical small red wagons with four wheels. Okay, so Penny puts Fluffy in one wagon and pushes the wagon once as hard as she can <laughs> okay and then Benny puts Bush in the other red wagon and pushes it once okay also as hard as she can okay so <laughs> the little uh dogs here are taking a ride each one in their own red wagon so both of the wagons travel across a level surface so the question is will the motion of the two wagons be different? Will the motion of the two wagons be different? 
Okay, they're obviously different sized dogs. So if Penny pushes both wagons with an equal force, okay, with an equal force, Fluffy's wagon here, little Fluffy, Fluffy's wagon will move faster, right? Because an object with less mass can speed up more quick, more easily. So since Fluffy here um, is less massive, obviously, than Butch, the same push will make her move uh, more quickly. So that puts us at D. Yes, Fluffy's wagon will move faster. Have fun, Fluffy. All right, number three, a hockey player hits the puck towards the net. Just after leaving his stick, the puck is traveling at 53 meters per second. No other force acts on the hockey puck until it hits the net. Just before hitting the net, how fast is the hockey puck traveling? So right here, it was at 53 meters per second. Right here, just before it hits the net, now how fast is the hockey puck traveling? traveling. So from the time the hockey puck, hockey puck leaves the player's stick to the time it hits the net, okay, no other force is acting on it. So this means that there is nothing to slow the puck down, speed it up, or even change its direction. So it will still be moving at 53 meters per second when it um, hits the net. Okay, let's look at number four. A speedboat is moving at a constant speed, and the force propelling it forward is balanced by the force of the water um, pulling it backward. Okay, it's balanced. So, but suddenly, ah, a wave strikes. A wave strikes it from the side with a force of 500 newtons. Okay, so when the wave hits the boat, what is going on? So maybe pause it and look over your answer choices. Okay, so before the wave hits the speedboat, it is moving at a constant speed because the forces acting on it are balanced, right? Uh, but when the wave hits the boat, a sideways force of 500 newtons is suddenly applied. So this sideways force is not um, balanced, okay? So the speedboat's direction of motion Okay, it's going to change, all right? It doesn't specifically say what's going to happen, but it's not balanced, so we know that the direction of motion will change. All right, last one, number five. We have three dogs, Ed, Max, and Marcy. They are pulling a dog sled along a patch of ice, okay? So Ed pulls with a force of 115 newtons, Max pulls with a force of 62 newtons, and Marcy pulls with a force of 90 newtons, okay? So, if there are no forces pulling on the sled backward, what is the net force acting on the sled, okay? So, since all of the dogs are pulling in the same direction, the forces they apply to the sled, they just add together, Okay, so if we add all of these together, you're at 267 newtons um, forward. So the sled experience is an unbalanced force of 267 newtons pulling it forward. So that would be C. All right, guys, so after fully mastering force and motion, you should be able to create a project, a presentation, an experiment, a model, something to explain all of this to your teacher. So I challenge you to do that. Ready, go.